All right, guys, now it's time to expand a little bit on the theory behind the practice. So it's not enough to know that reinforcers strengthen or create behavior and punishers um, reduce or remove behavior. You have to understand how dogs put two and two together, right? Because we as human beings, we're very cerebral, all right? We see something and we generally understand it, all right? The, the easiest way for you to think about it, for those of you that are parents, if you've had a two-year-old, you know that they struggle with the concept of behavior and consequence. They don't put two and two together. They don't put, well, mommy's upset because I broke the vase, okay? Or, or, or mommy's upset because I ran in the road. Especially when they're younger, when human children are young, this is the big problem with them is they struggle with the understanding of what behavior yields what consequence. And they just kind of do things impulsively and, and they don't really kind of understand consequences. And as a parent, it's your job to communicate those consequences clearly, consistently, and in a manner that is fair to the, de the, the developmental stage of the child. It's no different when you're training dogs, guys, okay? And dogs never get past, I would say, the average human toddler in terms of their um, understanding and in some cases they never even get there so it's important that you understand that your dog doesn't necessarily put together his behavior and the consequences that occur whether they're natural consequences like environmental like your dog pushes something over and it falls and crashes and scares the crap out of him or um, a consequence that you apply for a behavior that the dog perform. So we always assume they know and you shouldn't assume that. So for instance, if I'm giving my dog hot dogs because he comes when I call him, well, of course he understands he gets a hot dog when he comes. Does he? Or does he think, well, I came, I looked at you, I wagged my tail and I spun in a circle. Maybe I barked at you too. And then you gave me the hot dog. Which of those like five or six things yielded the hot dog? Not so clear, right? He barked at somebody. So I gave him a leash correction. Well, was it because I barked at the dog? Was it because I looked at the dog? Maybe the dog barked at me. Is that why it was corrected? Why did that aversive thing happen to me? Your dog doesn't necessarily identify automatically the specific behavioral contingency that yielded whatever consequence it was that occurred. So you have to think of it this way, okay? Behavior is neither good nor bad in your dog's mind. Now consequences, of course, are good and bad, right? So your dog either finds them desirable or undesirable. So in order for your dog to put two and two together, what behavior yields what consequence, which is obviously going to be basically what training the dog is, you're going to use a system of communication to bridge the gap we call markers, okay? And markers help the dog put two and two together. So for instance, if I'm calling my dog and I'm trying to mark the correct behavior that the dog is offering, right? And I say, Fido, come. And Fido turns around and takes one step towards me. And I mark, right? I use a marker. I say, that's the right thing. It's basically like taking a picture of a specific behavior and saying, that thing you just did, that's why you're getting this hot dog. That thing you just did, that's why you're getting this leash correction or this e-collar correction or whatever kind of correction you're giving the dog. So markers basically help identify specific behavioral contingencies within a behavior chain or pattern that the dog is offering. And it gives you the ability to say to your dog, that, that thing that you just did, that is why you're getting this consequence, whether it's a good one or a bad one, okay? So for us, the markers that we use here in the training, okay? Positive reinforcement. Okay, is we have two markers for positive reinforcement. We've got chip, okay? And chip basically is our marker for food, all right? But it can also be a marker for toys. I shouldn't say it's a marker for food. It's just a marker for positive reinforcement. You are getting something awesome, okay? Either food or a toy. There's really no other um, reason why we would say chip, okay? Now, I'm gonna quickly talk about chip, okay? Ice, you see how it's written. 
A lot of people make the mistake of make make the mistake of going chook and they say it like that. They say it like you would read it. All right. It's important you say it like a sound your dog has never heard before. There is a debate in dog training. A lot of people say that mechanical markers are much more powerful than verbal markers, and I disagree. Okay, I just think that a lot of people really don't know how to use verbal markers, and that's why mechanical markers. And a mechanical marker, for those of you that don't know, is a clicker. Okay, the it's it's an inanimate object. You push the button, and it makes that noise. Okay, that click noise. And a lot of people say, well, my dog has a much better response to that noise. And it's just because I find that a lot of people struggle with tonality using a verbal marker. Okay, they kind of use the verbal marker like they're talking. Chup. All right. Or a lot of people like to use yes, so they go yes. And they feed the dog, or, and and it's like, yeah, of course he's not responding the same because that kind of just sounds like something that you're saying. Your dog hears you talk all the time. You want your mark for positive reinforcement and also for punishment to stand out like nothing your dog normally hears. So for me, when I use chip, I use it like chip. Okay, my dog does not hear anything like that unless he's going to be receiving some awesome, awesome stuff. Do not say chip unless you have food. Or unless you have a toy that your dog really desires, all right? Don't be a liar. You don't know how many times I get people coming in here. They did their first week of training. They come back the next week, and I see them going chip, 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 and like three times they said chip. They didn't give the dog one piece of food. They didn't give the dog anything. And of course, they're saying chip, and the dog's just like ho oh, hum. I don't care, right? Because for him, it doesn't mean anything. They didn't load the mark, and by loading a mark, I mean they didn't give the mark meaning. If you want chip. To mean something, something predictable and desirable must follow it. So if he really loves his ball, and I say chip, and I throw the ball, guess what? Real quick, he's going to associate chip with his ball. Or if he loves food, and I say chip, and I give him a piece of food, really quickly, he's going to make that association. And chip is chip, I should say, is always going to mean something really great is coming. For those of you wondering where I got chip. I heard、um, some Czech traders using it like six years ago, and I said, "You know what? I like that a lot better than yes, because yes is what I was using before. I don't like clickers, and the reason I don't like clickers is one more thing to carry. I already got enough things to carry. So the less things I can use with my hands, the better. The less things that I have to feed in the future. So for me, I can always say chip and feed the dog or reward the dog with a toy. One more thing on chip: if my dog doesn't like food or if my dog doesn't like toys, there's no point to say chip and Give something that the dog doesn't like. The dog decides what's desirable. If he doesn't care for food or for toys, I'm not using chip. Okay, I'm going to use something else. Now I have another marker for positive reinforcement. It's praise. Okay, good, good boy, good girl. Okay, praise is what I use for a dog if I don't have a, a functional reward, whether it's food or a toy. Okay,、um, if I just Have me, then I will use praise. Right? Doesn't mean that I won't praise the dog if I do have food or toy. But again, that's another topic. We're going to get a little bit too complex. But we'll talk about it later when we're actually training the dogs. You're going to see how I kind of do everything. But good is a really important marker.、It、lets the dog know, hey, that thing you're doing, I like it. Again, your tonality is important. Some dogs really need a very upbeat form of praise, and some dogs need you to be calm. Because if you give them too much praise, they actually overstimulate, and their brain kind of shuts off, and they go into crazy land. And some dogs、uh, are, are are kind of a little bit lower in their emotions and their drive, and they need a little more like good boy, yeah, good job. So depending on the situation, depending on the dog, depending on what you're working on, will determine how you praise a dog. So generally, for me, an example. Puppy's far away. I call the puppy. Puppy come, and the puppy's coming. Good boy. Good job. Good, 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 good. And that praise is coming all the way until the puppy gets to me. At which point, maybe he's going to hear chip and get food. Or if I don't have food, or the dog doesn't like food, then I'll just pet the puppy and continue to praise the puppy once they arrive at me. But they're hearing that praise all the way back, reinforcing that behavior, that act of coming towards me. Okay. So praise is really important,、um, and and. A marker, kind of, just to generally let the dog know, I like what you're doing. Keep doing it is important. So, chip is a food or toy delivery. Good is just an affirmation to the dog. All right. Now, punishment. Okay. For me, I have two two、um, verbal punishers. Okay, and I'll explain the difference quickly. No is my big one. That's the one I use that we, when the dog really screws up, and I usually reserve this for bad behavior. Right. My dog barks at somebody. 
my dog jumps on somebody, my dog goes in the garbage, right? No, I identify that behavior. And just like with chip, I don't let myself become a liar immediately. No, I have to go and follow up and make a fit, a, an aversive consequence when the dog hears this, right? If I just say no and I don't do anything, very quickly, the power of no goes away. And that's why you see so many people, no, 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 they say to their dog and their dog's just like, whatever, doesn't mean anything to me. No only means what you make it mean, okay? So, so, and the way I say it, you see how I wrote it here? No! That's how I say it. There's this weird misconception in dog training that you can't use emotion. Now, don't get me wrong. There's times when the use of emotion um, in, in your training is, is, is counterproductive. But a lot of the time, using your emotion, whether it's a positive emotion or negative emotion, really aids in the communication with the dog. Good boy, good job, I really like that. No, I don't like that. Dogs are social creatures. They're naturally in tune with our emotions because that's part of the biological imperative that they have in order to survive, in order to coexist with us, right? So using your emotions in training is never a bad thing. As long as, of course, you're somebody that is in control of your emotions and you're aware of um, how your emotions are impacting what you're saying, what you're doing with your dog. If you're maybe a little bit... Uh, need to work on some things, then maybe you have to be careful with your emotions. But I find a lot of people, they don't communicate emotionally enough with the dog. The dog does something really bad and they're just like, no, right? No, let the dog hear you. He's barking at other dogs. He's being aggressive. He's being leash reactive. No, let him know. I don't like that. It means something. You know how many dogs come in here and they've never really been meaningfully told no. They might've heard the word, but they've never been They've never heard the word, if you know what I mean. And they try to be aggressive what, the, the first day they come here. And we say, no, and they're like, really? You mean I'm not allowed to do that? No, nobody ever said anything. Really? It's like, basically that's the, the, that's analogous, that's the analogous kind of conversation that we have with the two-way communication. So no helps to identify for the dog the specific behavior that you really hate and that he or she must stop performing. I also have, ah, ah. Now again, I know my writing is difficult to read, so bear with me. Uh, uh, for me is a soft no, so to speak. So I usually reserve this when I'm obedience training, okay? So if I ask the dog to sit or to down, and let's say, uh, I don't know, my dog broke the down, all right? She was in a down, and then she got up from the down. I'll just be like, ah, uh, uh, down, and maybe I'll put the dog back down. There isn't a, 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 a physical punishment that follows that generally for me. For me, it's generally I'll just create that negative reinforcement, guide the dog with a little bit of pressure back into the desired behavior. So the dog gets up from the down, ah, ah, down, and I'll put the dog back into the downs. A lot of the time, again, once the dog, real, if you're being consistent in the application of your markers, your dog will hear ah, ah, and immediately fix his or herself, okay? So ah, ah, is another one. Now, last but not least, we've got break. Now, the break signal is so important. Okay? Because what the break signal does is it notifies your dog that he or she is allowed to stop performing a specific behavior. Okay? It is a terminal signal. So if I have, if, let, let, let's say my dog's sitting and I say break means my dog can jump up and move around. You're free to go. Okay? You're on your own time until I tell you to do something else. So the break signal is something that we're going to use frequently throughout the training. Now, jumping back up to the chip. This is also terminal, okay? And again, forgive my atrocious writing, but you guys get the idea. When I say chip to a dog, it means he or she can stop performing the specific behavior, obtain the reward, and until I give another command or direct the dog to do something else, again, he or she is free. So it's a terminal marker, all right? So. For me, when I say, for instance, if I, if I told my dog to sit and my dog sat and I say, chip, my dog can get up after he or she eats the food or even to eat the food, they can get up. It's not a big deal for me. So break is a terminal marker. If I want to let my dog know that he or she can get up and I haven't fed them, I haven't marked the chip, okay? Um, I also have the, the break signal as well because there will be times where I don't have food and I haven't, or I don't have a toy and I haven't used chip. And I need to let the dog know, hey man, you can also get up. So like I just randomly tell my dog down. And I say, break, means you can get up, right? I didn't say chip because I didn't have a reward for the dog. 
um, but I just need to be able to tell my dog to brake. We're also gonna use the brake signal in certain specific areas of training as well, which we will get into um, further moving forward. So I hope this helps you guys. Um, this quick rundown, the four phases of training, um, uh, the, the markers that we use here, positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, negative punishment. I hope this is all percolating so that when you actually see me training the dogs, um, and you actually start training the dogs, you understand the means behind the method. You're not just mindlessly, you know, using a leash and, or, or giving the dog hot dogs or, or, or throwing balls. You know why it is that you're doing what it is that you're doing. So, hope this helps and um, check back in soon. There's gonna be more videos to come.